Thanks for tuning in to Resume Tips, presented by Light of Christ Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our presenter today is Susan Shepard. She worked for the Albemarle Corporation for 30 plus years as their vice president and worked in HR. Stay tuned to the end to find out how to get a one-on-one -on -one mentor for your job search needs. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to everyone tonight about resume, must-haves, and what not to do. One of the things I wanted to say before I get started is that looking for a job really is a full-time job. If you're looking for a position, you ought to be spending as much time as you would if you're going to work every day. Um, you really need to do your background and your preparation. You need to do research. You need to think about what you're interested in. So it's not something that you can just do looking at the internet a couple of times a week. It's, it really is a full-time job. So as we get into it, um, some of the resume must-haves. Remember that a resume is your marketing tool. It is a document that markets you. So it shouldn't just be a comprehensive list of your career history. Instead, it needs to sell you as the perfect person for that specific job and company. Um, you should customize your resume for each position that you apply for. You want to tailor the position you apply for by highlighting your qualifications and expertise that match that job description. Um, so have a master resume and then pull the important pieces off of it to go into the resume that you're going to use whenever you uh, apply for a position. The other thing to keep in mind on your resume is that employers often use screening software that scan documents for particular keywords that they're looking for. Um, so if you follow the job listing or the job description that you see online and use some of those same phrases for what the job requirements are, that'll help you get past the screening software and into the hands of a true human, uh, as opposed to just the computer screening you out. Try to keep the formatting simple and include the right keywords. And most important, check for spelling mistakes. As an employer, uh, I've looked at resumes many a day for many years, and I can tell you that if someone had a misspelled word in their resume, I took it personally that they didn't care about um, the job that they were applying for or my company, and I pretty much usually just set them aside. It's, it really makes a difference to an employer that you have taken the time and the effort to do everything you can to put your best foot forward. The other thing that's really important to do is to quantify your impact. Make sure that your achievements are backed by data. Um, so for example, you would make a statement like, led a 14 person team tasked with evaluating the company's supply chain system, resulting in 14% cost savings, 8% increase in profitability and 40% reduced turnaround delays. That as opposed to just saying that you are responsible for the company's supply chain system. That doesn't, unless you tell them the actual data, what your cost savings were, what the percentages are, they don't know what impact you had um, in your previous jobs. The other thing to remember is that you should only put relevant information and try to include the, the most uh, relevant information first. Keep your resume concise because it shows that you have clarity. If you just put everything about your background in there, um, it's, it's not, first of all, whoever is reading the resumes has a whole stack of them to look through. And they need to be able to find the things in your resume that's gonna stand out. And so they wanna also see what is it about your resume that's gonna say, I want to talk to this person for this particular job. Typically, volunteer work isn't on a resume. Um, however, if you have volunteer work that has taken up a significant chunk of your time, or it's taught you skills that are applicable to the specific job for which you're applying, then you can think about putting it on your resume, especially if you don't have leadership skills, but you have leadership skills from a volunteer role, it's very important to include that on the resume. Same thing for projects, pro bono work, side gigs, um, can bolster your resume and show off some of your skills that you may not have been able to show off during um, some of your previous work. And a resume should always include a summary statement, um, typically at the top, but think elevator pitch. What is it that you want that person reading your resume? What's the first thing you want them to know about you? It's not an obje objective statement. That is, that is old news. Um, there was a time when that was the important thing to have an objective statement on your resume. 
that is not, I can tell you if I saw an objective statement, I skipped right over it and, and then went and skimmed other parts of the resume. Do a summary statement. It usually consists of a couple of lines at the beginning of your resume that give potential employers a broad outline of your skills and experience. So it's, it's really that elevator pitch that if you, someone gave you the opportunity in two or three sentences to, to tell about yourself and why, why they want you, um, that's, that's your summary statement. Just as important as what you should have on a resume are things that you should not have on your resume. Um, you should never misrepresent your education or your job experience. Please remember that even one white lie can be grounds for rejection or termination. There are plenty of times when someone has said that they had a certain experience or a certain education, and after they've been hired, you, you find out that that's not the case. You go back to the application, they say they had it, um, that's grounds for termination. Um, so please never misrepresent your education or your job experience. Be, be very honest on your resume, and if you're missing something that's required for the job, talk about how you can shore that up in another way. Um, you don't need to give reasons in your resume about um, why you're leaving your current position. Um, they will often ask you that in an interview, so you don't need to put that in a resume. It just takes up space, and, it's, and some are interested in it and some are not. Also, you need to be careful not to get too personal. You don't need to put a photo on there. You don't need to put high social security number, marital status, or religious affiliation in your resume. This needs to all be about your professional life. Um, and then it used to be that we would put state references available upon request at the bottom of the resume. All that does is take up space. An employer knows that, or they'll expect that you will provide contacts if you're asked. So you don't need to make that statement. It just takes up space. Um, the other thing you don't have to worry about is using exact dates. You don't have to say February 2nd, 1999 through whatever date. Um, month and year is appropriate. If you don't know the month, it's okay if there are some gaps in your, in your resume and if you just use years. If you have the month and the year, that's perfect, but you don't have to get to the exact date. The other thing that I highly advise you don't do is don't experiment with a crazy format. Unless you're applying for a job that requires, um, maybe it's a media role or a communications role that, that's going to require a lot of design and, and uh, creativity, stick to a very clean, easy to read format. Um, catch a recruiter's eye with your experience, not with wacky fonts, colors, or designs. I have seen resumes that People bring, have sent to me that have a different color font for every job or different um, style of fonts, trying to uh, point something out, and all it does is turn you off. Uh, I'm looking for a professional resume that gets to the point that doesn't make me look all over um, for the information that I want. Um, once you have had your first job after graduation, you don't need to include a college GPA anymore. The GPA kind of goes out the window once you've got that first job out of college. Unless somebody specifically asks, and there are less and less companies that are asking for that GPA. And the other thing to not include on there is your past salary information. And in fact, in many states, it's illegal to even ask the question of what your past salary was. Um, so, so don't include that on your resume. So those are just a few tips on resumes. Just to summarize that, I would say, make it clear, concise, Try to keep it to one, maybe two pages. Don't try to use a, an eight point font um, and cover up your whole page. Try to make it to where you're, you gotta think about the recruiter who's looking at the resume and make sure there's some things that are really important that, that point out to them why you're the most important person for that job or why they should call you for either a phone conversation or an in-person interview.